So hello and welcome to episode 22 of Nightmare Down Under, the Gear City Let's Play where we play Down Under in Australia on Nightmare difficulty. We started in 1900, now it is April 1949, so we are in the midst of overhauling our entire lineup uh, to make them sort of true post-war cars. So where we're currently at is that we uh, have a lot of cars. They are all post-war models, but a lot are still based on pre-war um, underpinnings. We're currently working on, so we, we're good with our small cars, so our micro car and our compact, but we are currently working on the first uh, post-war uh, design for a full-size sedan and then all the uh, long wheelbase models uh, will be and newly developed so that they're fresh for the competition which is heating up so we get more company in sydney michigan motors one of the leading uh, car manufacturers uh, in the world and they have the lot as the competition so we currently as indicated by the two green dots we have two factories uh, although we only need one at the moment so if we look at our factory so we have 11 product lines in sydney available and we just uh, finished uh, Sydney although it's also a post-war factory and we have six lines in Melbourne uh, which we don't need and we can also easily expand Sydney further and with more competition on the shores I'm not sure that we will need that much more production capacity soon and it's going to cost us 150,000 per month just having this thing idle and so that's something we don't really need at this point uh, so um, we can save this amount of money and simply close the factory before we move forward. Otherwise, uh, yeah, sales are doing uh, fine, uh, I'd say. So, uh, and we can simply wait um, till the new full-size sedan is finished, and then it, it will take a while to get uh, really competitive again uh, once everything has cycled through the post-war stuff. And the overall duration for um, these car projects have also now increased, and the costs as well. So we need a lot more Utes. So I think um, things adjust themselves over time. So was this effect in Sydney? Because now we're competing here against the new Michigan Motors car, which is. Uh, as you can see, twice as expensive, but uh, much more, uh, or much, much better. And they apparently also have better image and stuff. And yeah, so things, but I think things in this case picked up slightly in general. <clears throat> but those, this, of course, will change a bit once we have finished also our, our ute. And we actually need, oh, well, leave it at that. Uh, more 34 sedans. So a bit we are sort of fighting with one hands behind our back so to speak with a bit of an outdated lineup but again this will probably change in due time so rest no more micro cars and compact cars that is i think still in past part of the post war boom i think micro cars are fine can probably because here we are i know our unit costs are finally finally good as well so but let's see how it does if we increase the price a little bit because it has a very, very good type rating. <clears throat> New contract requests? Nothing for us. Cash flow is negative but we paid 2.3 million taxes so I suspect they, we uh, get taxed on the sales from the factory scrap. So I'm slowly whittling down reserves, money more grand coupés, 1,700. But this is all no, and more compact cars still, micro cars fine. Can I increase the price for a Yes, should be 
able to. Make it two and see what happens. This is now a nice level of competition, but we are doing pretty well for ourselves here. So five months till we get our full size. And again, I'm still playing with this um, limitation. We can do one big car project at a time and a small project if we feel the need to. One thousand pickups or nine hundred seventy-three. Rest is good. Oh, compact car sales increase despite having raised the price. So then it's probably worth adding that production line. Also leads to a little bit better better quality. So I guess selling off uh, Melbourne factory helped in terms of our unit costs. Because now we are selling well above unit costs, so that that works. So that's a nice cash flow, 2.5 million per month. And uh, we can reduce production a few things a little bit. Although, now nah, let, let's build up some reserves because then we are more immune to fl uh, fluctuations. Maybe a few less grand could pace. So full size and three. You know, slowing down a little bit so we can make a few less 34 sedan and that's among the oldest cars that we have because that's then the um, clearly pre-war platform. Less Grand Coupés again. And by the naming it's easy to see which is old or which is new so everything genuinely pre-war it has still the numbers. And anything post-war uh, has the or has the proper names after Australian animals. So full size and two. How easily can we sunset? Quite easily. So this is now our first large wheelbase car with an independent front suspension. Yep, slowly but surely we're um, keeping up with. Uh, the trends, so we can make 450 34 sedans. Touring still sell, but not, not that much, so we won't uh, make another touring that simply sells, sells off, and when it dies off, then it dies off, similar to the Phaeton. More 28 sedans, 600. In our production line, but I think this is fine. 500 LXs. These are among the, among the, the oldest um, cars that we have, along with a Grand Coupe. But that's how it is. Alright, so next month we're getting our new Grand Kangaroo. The full-size sedan, because we're going to name our regular sedan the Kangaroo. So, it's gone. So then Alexis, back to, well, let's, let's sell them off, maybe just, just a bit of a fluke. Research complete. Let's see what the press says. The Grand Kangaroo A, and A is going to be the uh, evolution. So we're one of, one of the shrewdest companies out there, and now we've released a new full-size sedan called the Grand, Car Grand Kangaroo A. A lot of new features and styling. Should you buy one? So, everything you want in a daily driver. It's not only powerful, but it packs enough punch to get up and go. So, 72 horsepower uh, from our 2.3 liter inline 4 is fine. And torque 
doesn't do much, but it's the average uh, full size that on track. And handling is above average, but nothing special. When it comes to comforts and luxury, it's not going to win any awards, but it meets what you need. And uh, cargo space is good. We cut corners when we made it. It's dependable. It's The fuel economy is fantastic. Yes, yeah, so these 9.4 is sort of weird. Uh, this is probably um, less than it should be from the overall configuration. But I think since we now figured out how to do this gearbox thing, uh, that's probably then a side effect of that. Bare minimum in terms of safety. But so it's not the best, but it's overall a good choice. So then let's put it on the market. And here, um, so we have Michigan Motors only in Sydney, but they have two. Let's see how our single model fares. So we can undercut them by a bit. We don't have to, since it's on par. So price them. So make the price higher than the old, the outgoing. And here we are then still uh, nicely competitive. So let's finish production of the old one. So here we go. So next one is our oldest car, the Coupe Utility, the Ute. Same deal. New platform, new engine. Do they want the automatic or the manual? Let's, let's check that, because they want everything a little bit. But this has no warnings, 4038. And let's see how much. Oh, a little bit more performance, uh, a little, little bit more reliability is 39. Versus. The manual. 39.39 and so the automatic is slightly better okay so they, they want the automatic they can have it no problem because that's something we of course didn't know the first time around new generation new platform new engine the automatic the automatic gearbox so which body? So this oh this is the yeah, this is ancient. So this is this is probably something new. This also. And these I think are some we had already. Yeah. So what does our full size sedan actually look like? The new one. So it has these Two lamps and the wide grill. So two lamps on the outside and the wide grill, so automatic. So it's this, it's this one, so that it's the same look, just uh, the open bed at the end. Why does this now have specific 37? Is the body so bad? 1000? And this would have also 1000. I suspect the older bodies were simply larger. Yeah, 15. So this is 37, but anyway, we go with the, what we have in terms of bodies. So if we increase reliability slightly, it's 38. Let's just make the same check again for gearbox. Maybe this makes a difference somehow. I don't know. Three speed manual, design it, the whistle body, 38, 39, 38. Versus, so this is the manual, 
40, 38. Yeah, so this is 39. Okay, yeah, so they clearly... No, wrong body. And here they seem to prefer the manual. No, it doesn't matter. It's the same. 38, 40, 38. Yep, yeah, so, th so them. They get the automatic. That's okay. And... Yeah, design-wise, I don't think we have to change that much, to be honest. It's a Udo, right? It's pretty long product duration, but here we were a bit in a, in a, in a rush, so... Can we do with less performance? Uh, performance actually matters a bit. 37, probably fine. So 3740, 37 here. I'm going to reduce project cost a little bit now, since these these now actually matter. Cargo focus doesn't do a thing, but here. So 37. So 14 months for. 1.5, 13 months, 1.9, so 14, 15 months for 1.3. So 14 months is sensible, and let's see whether we can squeeze out a little bit more. Fifteen months. That was more. No, we had. I think we had fifteen. So forty thirty-eight. Yeah. So I think something like this. So this has 907 material cost. Oh, this actually matters here. 902. And it's 1,000 more expensive, so that's then the trade-off. So I'm probably still going with this and reduce the testing time. All right, 904. Otherwise, some interior quality actually makes things worse. Interesting. Okay, so then that's our new, what shall we call it? The Emu. Since maybe it looks a bit similar so that the front is higher than the rear. 15 months. And that's our second post-war car. So let's put it, put the um, new kangaroo, the new grand kangaroo into production. So it was the sedan. So that was with the new, much better cars, a thousand. Let's be optimistic. Definitely more than 8.55. So, let's see what whether this, this works. We, so, we sell it for more, but it's also much better. Genuinely post-war design. With independent front suspension and an automatic gearbox, nonetheless. Whoa, this is massive. 1,800. Tons of contract requests, but nothing for us. Best micro car in the entire world, but nothing else. So their racing series algorithm one and algorithm three. Let's check what that is of all things. Couple new competition, but not here. 
Maybe I shouldn't have closed down Melbourne so quickly. But anyway, competition is going to stay. So, this. What are these competitions? So, it's... Ah, Formula 1, 2, 3. Algorithm. Yeah, I get you. German Algorithm 3. So, 2 liter engines. You, we only supply engines. Okay. In the UK, Formula 1. Yeah, nothing close by. So, that was a nice surprise. Let's see how we actually... No, no, let's wait one more month till we supply enough for everyone and then see how we're actually competing. Yep, this is st stable now. So we need to make a couple less sedans, 500. And more sedan LX. These are always on the brink. Can probably make them a bit more expensive, but anyway, so let's see how we do. Okay, we nicely outsell them. We are slightly worse, but much cheaper. And at the same time, we are way above unit costs. So this is going to be reasonably profitable. So we own that market. So less need less grand coupes and less utes. Yearly sales. Probably we'll have to check. We think there's a compact van now. We can use torsion beam. Well, that could be something to check for the next chassis. And the DCT, but we haven't mastered that one yet. So then that's 1,300 utes. Or 1,400. No. Touring is probably on its way out. So... I'm going to stop production. That's not really worth pursuing any further. Let's just sell off the rest. So, less sedans. I think it's, sh it's showing that these are now the oldest models. And this looks a bit like um, competition. Let's just check the sedan market. But in general, Grand Coupe market as well. So that we have plenty of reserves, 900 Grand Coupes. And 1,500 Grand Kangaroos. So sedan market. No, it's simply a gen probably generally that our cars get outdated. Can we sell them for less? Not really, in terms of unit costs. Nope. But they're above manufacturing costs. And that's fine. So. Happy with that. Yeah, meet demands for the pension system. Can you use torsion beam? Let's just check where our pension fund is at. Three million, so let's see whether and how it grows. One other, th ah, some nice new backgrounds. So, okay, so we're still losing engine skills again. Then we have to give it some monthly funding. The others are fine since we managed to design um, so let's do 300,000 lock percentage so that we still get some increase. Not that we want to produce the best engines in the world, but we wouldn't want to drop behind. Uh, 250 is now that's a bit too little. So 
yeah, so that's probably sufficient. There is no real additional stuff we need that's coming up. Um, and with the others, we are at the at the end of um, the innovations as well. It just we get better engines out of it. So if we're falling a bit behind with our sedans, and so that's that's fine. We shouldn't have to catch up with with wartime stuff and uh, some nice new green walls here in 1950. Yep, so touring, we missed 107 sales, so we can simply end production of the touring and that was it. That's not really worth pursuing any further. But can we start retiring stuff? No. Oh, so Dan still uses an older gearbox. Which is something we could give, probably need to give a makeover. Because this now gives age penalties. Engine. Still used by Grand uh, Coupe and Pickup. And chassis still used by Pickup and Ute. And he is still also used by Sedan and Grand Coupe. No. So touring is gone. One less car type to worry about. Missed sales. Sedan and Grand Kangaroo. I think with these large sales numbers we should strive for some higher reserve levels. So 1.6 Utes. So, 450 Sedan LX, or that, 1,200 Grand Coupes, more compact cars, 1,100. And 1,700 Grand Kangaroos. How is our, our, our unit costs are high, but I think it's simply generally that these costs are simply now now higher than they were before. And cash flow 2.3 million per month, so that's certainly nothing to scoff at. We're paying two million in taxes, so then that's uh, this negative cash flow in this uh, time. So nothing new. No contracts for us. We barely keep up with demand for some. So the so stressful times are now over. Okay, one extra production line for our Grand Kangaroo. That seems to be doing really well. Rest is good. So 500 reserves are probably now something to, to aim for. That we aren't caught out when people all suddenly get the idea to buy stuff from us. Few more pickups. Now let's 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 just leave things where they are. So two, maybe 200 and 500 would be something to act, and if we have sales figures above a thousand, and that's probably something sensible. A few less compact cars though. Six months for our cube utility.
So a few less Utes. Rest is perfect. Destruction in South Korea. Ah, that's that's the Korean War, I suspect. Yeah, water lining at Incheon. What we think I haven't checked was the how our company is doing. So we are doing. Yeah, so we are definitely out of the top sellers, but I think that's just to be expected. So our top companies sell 500,000, 350,000. We are selling below 100,000. That's a nice negative profit, but I suspect they bought a couple of marks. So anyone, yeah, so still a couple in trouble. Positive profits, but also Michigan Motors, so our biggest or one of our biggest competitors is doing exceptionally well. Oh, the others. So, Apeson is doing okay. Hopesy. They are not doing that well. Because this looks like an operational loss, but they still have some cash reserves. I think we have Jameson Farewell. They don't exist anymore. Let's check Perth. And we made a profit of 22 million, so that's very nice to have. So what happened to Jameson Farewell? Are they simply gone? Yes. So Perth has... Not that Perth matters in any way. In terms of size. Bur Burnt All still still exists. So Perth, Perth is... Well, it's almost a level of Adelaide. So it's actually uh, not... It, it matters to a little extent. But not, not that much. So Burnt All is doing... Not doing that well either. That looks also like operational um, losses. Coop utility in five. So, yep. Things are stable now, that's that's good. So no no fiddling every month with uh, sales or production figures. Some more sedan LXs and grand kangaroos. Uh, increasing the price of the sedan LX. And the sedan also. Nope, sedan is fine. Actually, can make a few less. Few more grand coupes too. Cube utility in two. So we just can make a few more pickups and a few more utes. New contract requests, nothing for us. Still best the best micro car in the world. New racing series. New competition. But not nothing that concerns us in a particular way. Probably don't need to make, make more. The pickup is two months keep utility, so I can actually start phasing it out a little bit. Let's just check out of interest the new um, racing series. So drag racing. And we had the U UK Formula 3. So keep utility next month, and then it's the new pickup.
so I can make a less, few less wombats. Rest is safe, so pickup truck. 750, no, huge. 1100. And here we go. Sales dropped, so we still have some left. Okay, well, it's fine for a month. Research complete. Sales that our new new grand kangaroo is the best seller. This will probably change since now the Ute comes online is available. So less standard sedans, less grand kangaroos. So let's put the ute on the market. So we have competition, but that's insanely expensive. Ours is also going to be a bit more expensive. One, one eight. Yeah, that's I think that works. So we're selling still to a reasonably high class. Can leave the old one on the market for one more. And so ours is at better than Michigan Motors thing, just cheaper. What does the press think? The Emu A. So they got our hands on the new Emu A, and now they can see how this looker drives. Whether this looker drives as good as it, as it looks. It's an underperformer on the track, so then something to keep in mind for the future. We need more power. And not not great, but not bad in terms of torque. It handles well. Average interior, not much space. Yep, we uh, noted that, but that's simply the available body. Fit is good. It's quite reliable. Excellent fuel economy. So we could have used a bigger, bigger engine. And above average in terms of safety. So overall, things looks th th this looks pretty great. Our Dingo A is still the most fuel efficient car on the market, so I guess that, that's not something we managed to uh, get. How to design fuel economy and gearboxes in, that, in, the, in the process. So let's stop youth production and start emu production. So then let's be optimistic again, very optimistic, similar to the Grand Kangaroo. So we sold 1.1, one, one. so let's make 1.7. And we still have the other one on the market. So something like this. So next one, next up, is the pickup, or is it? Let's just double check where things have changed in terms of body type demand. So cube utility is second most a popular thing in Australia. Sedan is, is highest, two plus two. Full size sedan is up here. Yeah, pickup truck actually doesn't look that bad. So, pickup truck it is, and so Ute goes out of production next round, pickup, new generation, new platform, new engine, and you're going to get the manual, car body, so we had these lamps that were wide apart, so this square thing. But this is the body that we had for the ute. So that's one, three. Square is one, two, it's smaller. That's odd. This, is, this seems to be larger. One, one, eight, yeah. So that's the big pickup. So that's the small coupe utility. That's the big pickup. Here is one more. One, six, nine. One, seven, nine. So this is better. This looks more like the typical pickup, but they forgot the grill. Oh, this this could be the pickup. 1.8, yes. And you could even say it sort of has the same wheelbase, just much larger tires and stuff. And these are 
pretty identical. One nine. Yeah, we're not giving too much on, on looks. Um, what was this? So this is now this has an even larger wheelbase. So this is sort of okay. Okay, so that's that. This is well, this is this is expensive to, to make. Okay. That's just again our accelerated project durations. We're getting less than 75 of the optimal brake specific fuel stuff. I guess that's the gearbox at work again. Ah, we can optimize for that. What effect does this have? 16.3, 16.8, it doesn't really matter and that just makes it more expensive. And no one really cares about fuel economy for a pickup. Hang on, one thing we probably could and should do is check whether we want to upgrade our platforms. And I think I say yes. So this makes it much stronger and more dependable. What we can also think of is whether we want to give the a Grand Kangaroo a bit a sm small overhaul. So here going with major due to more power and torque. And there's probably not much to do for the new gearbox since I think no one has used it so far. Over a little bit. Let's let's uh, wait a bit more since it's actually being produced and let's try this again. So pick up new generation. Overhauled platform, overhauled engine, manual gearbox. So no design warning here. We are getting a design warning with... Nope, that did the trick. 15.3, so it's actually quite fuel efficient. So I think these settings all were fine. So 15 months probably again, 16 has 1.6, 15 has 1.8, that's okay. Can we, and the stats are pretty great, 43 to 50. Suspect that this is simply the large body. And these are fine. Yeah, then this is going to be it. Our new pickup. 14 months. Yes, 13 is 2 million, 14 here. When do we have to tackle the next upgrade? So medium wheelbase stuff, 1938. So it's, yeah, it's getting its age penalties soonish. So let's say 13, nah, although it's not much of a difference, well, 500,000. Let's see, let's say 14 months and then let's um, suffer a bit for, let's have our medium wheelbase car suffer a little bit. Does demographic testing, you now it makes things worse again, as still. So that's our pickup and that's going to be the flatback. The flatback is a turtle. Uh, lives in Australia, and I think it fits for the, for the pickup truck since it has a flat back. So that's that. And otherwise, let's see how well. One other thing. Ah, now we're getting the uh, additional change per quarter since we overhauled the engine. So we don't need the extra R&D anymore just to get a little bit more engine skill increase. So... Did I mention being optimistic? This is insane. 
So the old Ute is gone. And production. And we need to make how many more? So up one two two thousand six hundred for the emu. And nothing wrong with increasing the price as well. Good thing we can easily uh, miss sales a lot. Increase demand. Increase demand for full size sedan in Australia. So that's this effect. I think these are random. And this means. Wow, everyone wants now full size sedan, so okay, happy to oblige. So 2800 grand kangaroos. And 2800 emus. Good thing we can expand Sydney by how many production lines in six months? Eight. Okay, yeah, that that should uh, that should take care of things. So let's. We of course need to ask the press um, what they think of the new emu. So pickup is doing also well, 1,200. Let's, let's build some reserves for our two best sellers, definitely. The rest is fine. So the new Ute. So they got the hands on the Emu A, and so I can see how it drives. It's an underperformer. So again, so that's something we can earmark. Both the full size sedan and the Ute need uh, quite a bit more power. Torque is fine. It handles smoothly. Average interior. Not much space. I think we no we we, we had read that yeah we had read that I think or. Anyway, so good interior quality, more reliable, great fuel economy, and it's not the safest, but above average. So they really like it. Yeah, I think we we had we we had read that. So 2,500 Grand Kangaroos. So more stuff going on in Korea. Two thousand eight hundred emus. Some more dingoes, although I'm inclined to make it a bit more. So, th so the price prices are sort of insane that the micro car is more expensive than the compact car, but that's these independent markets here, and I'm, here I'm going with uh, the game mechanics. Do I have to? Not necessarily. I think we can afford. Playing along, so I'm ignoring the, the sedan for a while because they are now outdated models. So if I make the dingo sell above unit costs, make the wombat more expensive, the emu and the grand kangaroo they are probably fine. And so let's just calibrate things around s stuff that's sensible. So I probably need to make more dingoes, and I can do that. 
So something like maybe 600. Nothing wrong with a little bit of realism, even though the game um, doesn't force you to. And our 5 million cash flow a month is certainly a level where we can afford that. Yeah, so estimation for the dingo is fine. Wombat sales have increased, so we make 1,100 wombats. That's also the next production line. I think I can expand Sydney now. Let's wait till the six months till the pickup truck hits, but with everything upcoming, I think uh, that's definitely we, we sh something we should do. Things will probably change once, once Michigan Motors also decide to expand to Melbourne too. But until then, we are probably going to be just fine. More grand kangaroos to eight. So that's, I guess, the post-war boom, which I think also will end at some point, but let's just ride the wave for the time being. Do five grand kangaroos. Rest is still very stable. Some less pickup trucks. Pickup truck in eight. Why are we paying in taxes? 3.6 million, yeah. That's why we have these occasional negative cash flow things. That's just the counterpart to having very successful months otherwise. So, I think it, make expand, it makes sense to expand Sydney full stop. Because if the pickup truck is also as successful and we haven't even started on our new medium-sized platforms. So, eight more lines. And what we can probably earmark then is building Melbourne again for the third time. But this wasn't obvious that this would be such a game changer. And also that the market would go through the roof like this. So I would do it again, and it's no big deal. We have enough, um, and we we even can pay this out of our operating expenses. Still a positive cash flow despite this huge construction project. That's funny. More Grand Kangaroos. New contract request, Adelaide Commercial Fleet. Best equip utility in the entire world, the Emu A. Let's license it out. Capitalize on that. So, lesser than LX, they have now built a lot of reserves. I don't know why I didn't spot that earlier. So more Wombats. 2,900 Grand Kangaroos. Emu is fine. What do they want? They want the Grand Kangaroo. Selected model for so let's bid 1,250 so that we may finally get some contract at some point. Just additional sales, uh, free, essentially. So pick up truck in four. Yeah, 
Yep, so we're still getting our um, skill increase. That's great. So that did the trick. So let's check the sales stats at the start of the new year again. Whether our massive um, sales increase did something. Nope. So we are still behind the curve. But yeah, that's to be expected if you're uh, down under at the wrong end of the world. So we sold over 100,000. That's neat. We made some nice profit. How's the rest of the world doing? So lots of marks are being acquired. Uh, so a big consolidation wave going on. Some may have overextended a little bit. How many are making profits? Oh, some making very nice profits. Although, uh, cool shenanigans on that one. AI at work, I guess. Michigan Motors still doing fine. And us being very much up here in terms of profits, not so much in terms of sales. 800,000 Q worth. They, they bought some marks. And let's just have a look at... Yep, yeah, so things are taking off for us. And our sales charts. Yep, yeah, so best sellers, the new cars, and I would expect this to continue for everything else too. All the new stuff. So compact and micro car, yeah, isn't really the big market at the moment. We can keep selling them, they make a profit. But otherwise, yeah, not um, something to make the big bucks. Similar to the, the, unlike during the during the during the Great Depression, where the microcar did exceptionally well. 3,100 emus, please. Um, I'm keeping it here for a bit, and then next time gets the another production line. Pickup slowly sells off, and it's going to be sunset at next round anyway. So vehicle sales. That works well. So we have the hydroelastic suspension system that's I think this was the British Leyland contraption that they used in the mini early on and then in the princess and better turbos Uh, our sedan sales go through the roof. That looks like a market exit from Hope C to turbocharger stuff. That's, I think, one of the downsides of playing with not that much competition. Once one leaves, things explode. So Emu is fine. Pickup truck. Let's produce 650. Yeah, and so sedan. That's the hopes he gone. They hadn't sold anyway. And Michigan Motor. Why is Michigan Michigan Motors gone? Have they both discontinued their? Um, no, they're still here. Let's just check things. Because that's. So both Hope C and Michigan Motors discontinued their sedan completely. Yep, they don't have any. I suspect we get some then. Oh, next time around. They only have one car for sale, Hope C. Is this. What's their lineup looking like? And they're not doing anything anymore? So they have an active roadster and the rest is discontinued. What is that? Oh! They were losing money left and right. Are they dead? Why they still exist 
and I suspect they do. Where are they? That looks like an implosion. So they are all over the place. All in, they bought a couple of marks, but still. They were still, headqu yeah, still headquarters here. They, they started in Melbourne. They are worldwide, but they just imploded. They only have one roadster for sale. Wow. So, so we have to, yes, yeah, then we have to ramp up our sedan production again. So the old, ancient, pre-war car-based sedan. So, yeah, we have 1,000. I'm starting with the LX, actually, because that's probably the more profitable one. And I can jank up the prices. I'm just that ruthless. Don't, don't get price gouging. No, just we get the H penalty, but if there is no alternative, what are you going to do? So that's half and half. So two lines for one and two, two lines for the other. Ah, don't need that many actually. So three lines here and three lines there. Good thing we expanded Sydney, just, just in case. And I can probably start on Melbourne. Let's see what hopes what hopes he does next next turn. So s still a few missed sales for the other sedan and pickup truck is gone. And factory expansion is there, so we can now start um, the factory in Melbourne again. Things are falling our way. That's that's definitely the case. Let's since we have to adjust things anyway. Let's just recondition while we are at it, and then work our way through. So Grand Kangaroo, two thousand nine hundred. Emu, three one is fine. Wombat. 1-1. One, one. Grand Coupe is fine. So sedan, uh, standard sedan 1-3. So the old pickup goes. The new pickup 1-5. The flat back. One six, since we have the production capacity. Sedan LX was fine. Dingo sounds actually quite nicely. Nine hundred, probably a hopesy exit. So suddenly the biggest competitor gone. Now I can be a bit more relaxed if Michigan Motors decides to expand, or Apeson for that matter. So everything's optimized. Yes, so then I can stop production of the pickup. And get cracking on the medium sized plat. Let me just check one thing. So I could make the Grand Kangaroo cheaper to produce and probably better. Fuel consumption for this vehicle is optimal for this angel design. That's, none th that's a nice warning to have. What does the press think about the new pickup, the flat pack? No one's, no one's going to hang it on a poster. It's the latest plane journey iteration. Yes, that's the idea. Okay. The 78 horsepower is actually uh, respectable. Torque is also fine. It's not very drivable. Bare bones interior. They love the space. Nothing wrong with the build quality. Very, very uh, reliable. Good fuel consumption. And no safety. But otherwise, awesome. So then 
it's clear what we need to do with just six production lines available in Sydney. We need to start a factory in Melbourne and we need to uh, work on our medium uh, wheelbase platform. And that's something we're going to do in the next episode. Until then, 